Okay, good afternoon. It's the afternoon. Well, obviously it's the afternoon, otherwise I wouldn't have said good afternoon. <laughs> Idiot. Um, I was distracted by some social media nonsense on my phone. Don't ever look at your phone during the day. It's just a time killer. Fear is the mind killer. I'm excited. For, uh, see, I, my brain gets distracted so quickly. We're going to talk about install IBM i HTTP server. So if you have followed the instructions here and installed the HTTP server, um, maybe it already came with your install. All you want to look for is the 5770DG1 license program name running on your machine. I've got a screenshot here from Pub400 and I just realized of course because this is a free cloud-based internet IBM i server that you can sign up for. If you google my website you'll see instructions on how to do that. Um, it has every single language in the world installed on its machine because people connect to all different languages, right? And so that's why you see this same HTTP server installed all over the place. So what I did was I connected to one of my US clients' machines and did a display software resource. This is the command that you're going to enter just to make sure that you've got the license program installed. Display software resource. Press enter. It shows you the software that you have running on your machine. You can press F11 to see the feature codes and what libraries and nicely you can see what release of OS that you're running. Um, that's just a useful trick when someone says what version of the OS or modification level I'm at. Just do a display software resource, press F11 and you can quickly see your release of IBM I. But we're looking for 5773DG1. So if we just paid down a few times there we are. I can see it right here on this screen. Here's my IBM HTTP server for i installed on this machine, ready for use. Um, I believe the first line that we see there is the main code. So that 5050 is like the code for the HTTP server. And the next code here, feature 2924, is American language. So your mileage may vary, right? If you're in the UK, I expect you to see a different feature code there, or France, or Germany, or wherever you are. It'll make sense. I don't need to labor the point on that kind of stuff. So there's my license program installed. So now we're going to start it. So the first thing we need to do is to start a TCP server. I will copy and paste these screens and put them into the lesson for verify so that you can see them. Uh, when it comes to the, it says, right, what server do you want to start? You have all the servers you can define here, FTPs and telnets and blah, blah, blah. Um, we obviously want to start our HTTP server. And it then says, um, what server instance do you want to start? Now, this is because when you have your HTTP server, let's say you created three copies of an HTTP server. If you're a typical IBM um, software development shop, you're going to have a development environment, um, a test or QA environment, and a production environment. You may have a dev, a test, a QA, a UAT, user acceptance test, uh, production environment. And in this case, most places will create a copy of the same web server um, just with a different port number. Again, these are all things we're going to cover later for each of those environments. So that's what it's asking you for there. Now, one ring to rule them all. One of the things that it always creates is an admin server because it uses HTTP to serve up the um, client access, uh, sorry, the access client solutions web server interface because everything's graphical, everything's point and click. You haven't got to be on green screen typing in complicated commands. You just start the server, launch ACS, click um, ACS Navigator or whatever they call it, what do they call it now, Navigator for i and boom a website pops up and it lets you make the changes to everything you do. All point and click, you don't need to le learn code, super simple, a um, little bit slow which is my personal criticism but it works really well and I like that. But I'm blathering on, so what do you need to type in? You need to type in start TCP server what server type asterisk http and what server name asterisk http server star admin if you start all don't worry about it assuming this is your first server admin it just it's just going to say right i'm just going to start all the uh, http servers that i have defined the only one you've got to find so far is your admin one right so 
you're just going to press enter to start it. I happen to know that it's already running on this machine, right? So I'm going to press enter anyway. It just says HTTP server starting. Silly thing. Anyway, how do we know that it's running? So what we want to do is we want to do a work act job command. So if we work with active jobs and we're looking at a specific subsystem, the subsystem we're going to look for is Q HTTP SVR, the HTTP server subsystem. When we work with that, we'll see each of the servers that's running. So here's my subsystem that's active. Here's a web server that I'm running on this machine called admin. Um, here's some others that I've been playing around with. Here's another one that I'm playing with. Here's another one. That, so here's a whole bunch of different web servers that are running on this box. Um, I expect if this is your first time, all you would see is these first four lines. Um, I'll go into detail about what these jobs are, but essentially, at the very basic level, all you've got to think about is for each server that runs, you're going to have um, a batch job, which is the server itself running, and then a BCI, a batch job interactive, I think that stands for. I don't even know what it stands for. Let's have a look and make sure I'm not spouting utter, oh, batch immediate job. Those batch immediate jobs spawn for each thing that the web server is doing. So if you had um, five people on the internet connecting to your web server, I'd expect to see five little jobs spawn to service those customers. And then once they finished, they quiesce and go back to sleep again. It's kind of an on-demand service. So if you're seeing the HTTP server up and running and you started your host server, then you should be up and running. So let's go and connect. So launch IBM I Access Client Solutions. Here's my one that I launched earlier. Make sure that you have your system name defined. If you haven't got your system name defined, click on System conf Configurations, enter your system name. I suggest putting in your long format DNS name, or you could always use your IP address if you want. Once it verifies and says, right, I can talk to that machine, now we're going to simply connect by clicking navigator for i now what navigate let me close that tab down what navigator for i does is it will try and connect to the machine name in my case there's my machine name using port 2001 that's the default so if we put colon 2001 so it's your system name or ip address colon 2001 you press enter my web browser is now talking to my HTTP server running on IBM I and it responds back with hello who are you so it's asking me for your my username and password my username in this case is this Shh, don't look at my password. you can't it's hidden <laughs> when I uh, press enter and let those details Go back to IBM I. It verifies my, verifies my profile exists, is enabled as the correct authority. And here I am into the IBM Navigator screens. Mine's a little bit slow because A, I'm VPN, B, I'm working remote, and C, this actual system that I'm connected to, as I said, it's a client, is 2,000 miles away on the other side of the country. Welcome to IBM Navigator for I. And we have all these different functions down the left hand side where we can look basically a graphical UI way of doing most of our functions that we do on green screen. We can do work at job. We can do a work spool file. We can convert spool files to PDFs on the fly. We can change users and security settings. You can kind of do everything all from a nice modern UI as opposed to an old green screen. That's it. IBM Navigator 4i is up and running. So the next thing we're going to do is create a web server and maybe write some web services on there. But uh, at nearly a 10 minute video, I'm going to stop. So I hope that's shown you how to uh, install, launch, um, double check and verify. Navigator for i all in one blathering video. So I'm going to shut up. <laughs>